Hello, good people of the internet. This is Jed from Your Guitar Academy. Today we're going to be going through the verse and the chorus parts of the song Gravity by John Mayer. Okay, so before we dive into the verse and chorus of this song, if you didn't see it, there's a video on the intro part of this tune. So if you want to check that out, um, there'll be a link in the description below. Okay, so the verse part of this song is um, harmonically is the same as the intro. So we're just using a G major chord and a C major chord. So we're going to use the E shape uh, for playing the G chord. And then we're going to use the G shape of the cage system for playing the C chord. So that looks like this. So we're going to jump between those two. So I'll give you a little example of the verse. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Cool. So between going between these two chords, there's a lot of what you would call Hendrixisms or Mayerisms. So these, they're like little R&B guitar bits. And what I'm doing there is using the, the G major pentatonic to play those. So I think on the, the recording, John Mayer, I, I doubt that he's ever played this the same, exactly the same twice. So Way, the way that he plays it, he does this little, so right when he starts the verse, he goes and then. So we got this little. We're moving from the major third up to the perfect fourth in the top part of this chord, so. Now he did that in the recording, but I think if you watch him play it live, he'll probably play around with different variations of that kind of thing. And so that's what I was just doing. So what I'm going to do is give you maybe a couple of examples and you can mess around with those yourself and see where you can slot them in over your G chord and C chord. So I would say keep it simple if this is something new to you. So this is the one that we'll look at first, this moving from the major third up to the perfect fourth and then back down. Because that's a, that's a nice sound in itself. Just even just on the one chord. down. That's really nice. So you get those suspended chords. So here's that again. So we've got... So I'll just go through that. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's happening just before the end of the bar. So one, two, three, four, five. It's on the end of five. And then before we move to this C chord, you can use little things to tra transition into it. So maybe that part we used in the intro, which was... Or you could... All I'm doing here is using parts of the major pentatonic. Let's do that. That's, that's nice. That's climbing up from the low G and then we're moving into the major third of the C chord. So from the top we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So what I'm doing there, I'm playing, all the notes are played on the beat, so I've got I'm starting on this low G here on the third fret. Then I'm sliding into the major third from the second note in the scale. So, so what I'm doing is low G, first finger on the third fret, then ring finger on the fifth fret of the low E string. And you kind of almost immediately slide up to the seventh fret. So. Landing on the fifth fret of the A string with my first finger. And then after. 
after that, I'm playing the C major chord. So. And again, this is a, a G shape C major chord, but I'm just playing, I'm, I'm missing out the root note here. So rather than this, I'm just playing from the major third there. So that's the lowest note in the chord. So I think that's a first inversion. So there you go, there's a nice transition from the G chord to the C chord. So we've got. And I'm doing that halfway through the bar preceding the C chord. So let me count that out for you. So we've got a one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. to the C chord. So when we get here, he does some really nice things where he's sliding up using this shape. He's sliding up from kind of the fifth to the seventh, or you could see it as the seventh to the ninth, depending on which finger you're concentrating on. But what I'm doing here, I'm actually moving my hand position from this C chord and moving my ring finger over to the D string. So here we've got this kind of little minor third interval. So that's seventh fret on the D string, and then fifth fret on the G. And we're sliding that up. So two frets, the exact same shape, and then back down. So if we're in our playing our C chord, you keep it really simple, do something like that. So if I went, um, and then we'd want to transition back to the G chord somehow. So, there you go, there's a nice little transition. So I'm just coming back down the steps, basically, that's how I'm thinking about it. And what I'm doing there is hitting the root note, so the G on the D string, so that's the fifth fret. I'm playing that with my first finger. Then I'm hitting the seventh fret on the A string with my ring finger. And then after that, I'm doing the fifth fret on the A string with my first finger. So all together, that sounds like. Great, so that gives us like a, a, a steps up to the C chord and then steps down. So I'll play that whole thing again. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Great, so there's a nice place to start off with those chords. And then maybe let's look at a few more kind of Hendrixisms, Mayorisms, uh, and play around with those and see the variations we can do and the variations maybe you can play with. So, so I'm just going to go between, I'm just going to play around for a bit and go between G and C. Okay, now that I've played around for a bit, I think a good way to approach this is if you're playing your E shaped G chord, think about kind of moving a note in the chord up by just one note. So if we're on the top E string, you could hammer on your ring finger to the fifth fret. Or if we're on the B string, you could hammer it onto, again, the fifth fret, but that's on the B string. Then if we're going up a note on the G string, we're just going to go up by one fret. So that would be putting your ring finger again on the fifth fret. So you can think about it that way. So putting your ring finger on the fifth fret of either the E, B or G string. 
Actually, what I'm doing here is I'm using my pinky to grab those notes on the top E and top D strings. Okay. Then when I play the G string, I'm actually using my ring finger. So. so that's a really nice, simple thing to play around with. So if you go... Lots of variations there. You keep it as simple or as complicated as you, as you want. So you could go... I'll do a, a simple um, example for you. So one... Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then we're going to be on our C chord. So again, this is this G-shaped C chord. I'm going to keep this real simple. So we're going to use very, a very similar technique. So when we're playing this G-shaped C chord, I'm going to use my pinky again, but I'm going to focus on the G string and the D string. And the, sa the same thing, I'm going to move the notes in the chord up. So what I'm doing there is putting, I'm hammering on my pinky to the seventh fret of either the G string or the D string. So, And that's all I'm doing. So I'm going to improvise between those two chords with exactly that little technique I just talked about. So let's have a listen. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So that can make your chords in the verse part of the song a little more interesting rather than just playing them as static chords. It kind of adds a bit of colour, a bit of flavour. So have a play around with that and see what's comfortable for you. Great. Okay, so now we're going to look at the next section of the song. And this is sort of a, a pre-chorus and a, a post-chorus, depending on where it is in the structure of the tune. So I realised that the um, part we were just looking at is... It's the verse, but it's also the chorus. So when it returns to that G and C chord progression, um, it's both a verse and a chorus. But let's look at this next section. So we've got a, I'm going to call it the post-chorus, pre-chorus section. So the pre-chorus, we've got, I'm just going to go through the chords. So we've got an A minor 7. And then we've got a D7. got a G minor and we've got this interesting chord that's a kind of E flat major chord it's got the major six and major seven in there and then we're back to our D7 again so I'll just play through the progression and then I'll talk about how to play it so Okay, so the way I'm approaching this is with each chord, I'm doing a very similar thing. I'm going to strum the chord and then I'm going to arpeggiate it. So, we, first of all, we've got this A minor 7. So the way I'm playing this is I've got the open A string. Then I've got my ring finger on the 7th fret of the D string. Then index finger on the 5th fret of the G string. Then pinky on the 8th fret of the B string. And then index, again, that's on the top E string on the fifth fret. So this is the voicing. So we're going to strum that chord. And then I've got this pattern that I play. So I strum it. And then we're going... 
So what I'm doing there is the D string, then the B string, then the G string, and then I'm gonna play the strings descending from the top E string. So, so we've got... So I'll do that one more time for you. So you can hear the rhythm of the picking there in the arpeggio. So we've got... Okay, so we're going to do a similar thing for the next chord. So after we've played this A minor 7, we're going to move to a D7. And the arpeggiated pattern here is a bit simpler. So after we strum it, I'm hitting the A string, and then I'm descending the strings starting on the B string. So B, G, D. And so with these first two chords, we're gonna do a strum and then an arpeggio a strum and then an arpeggio, and then we change chord. So that would sound like this. Between those first two chords, we'd have... And then after that, we're gonna move to our G minor. So the way I'm playing this chord is very similar to the verse G major, so it's like this E-shaped minor chord. And I'm using my thumb to play the root note again. So, so same thing, we're going to mute the A string. And I do that by using the top of my ring finger, and maybe my thumb. It could be both at the same time, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter, so long as one of them is muting it. So we've got... Yeah, okay, so when we're on this G minor chord, we're just going to be here for one bar. And then the chord after that, we're going to be there for a bar as well. So when we, we come to this G minor, I'm doing the same thing with the arpeggio that I did in the previous chord. So I'm strumming the chord. And then on the top four strings, I'm starting with the D string. And then I'm descending the strings from the top E string. So I'm going... So we've got a strum, and then, then we're going to change chord, and then we're going to change to this interesting uh, E flat major chord. So it's like a, it's got a major seven and a major six in it. So it's kind of like a C shape major chord from the cage system. So if it was a regular E flat major chord, it would look like this. So I'll show you the variation. So here's a C shape E flat major. We're flattening the root note here on the B string. So I'm using my index finger to play that. Then we're actually gonna raise the fifth up to the sixth, but it means we need to rearrange our fingers to play it correctly. So we're actually gonna use our ring finger to play this note here on the G string. So we've got index on the third fret of the B string. Then we've got ring finger on the fifth fret of the G. Then I'm using middle finger on the fifth fret of the D. And then with the root note, I'm using my pinky. And that's on the sixth fret of the A string. So there we've got a major seven in the chord. That's the major seven. That's the major six. There's your major third and there's your root note. So there's no fifth in the chord, but you don't need it in this case. 
like that one, it's kind of mysterious. So the same thing's going to happen here as in the previous chord. We're going to be here for a bar. And the arpeggio is the same. So we strum the chord. And then we're just we're concentrating just on the four middle strings. So I'm starting with the A string. And then I'm descending the strings from the B string. So that would be... Okay, so the last chord in this um, pre-chorus section is a D7, and it's the same as the D7 we played before. So here we're going to do, the, do a very similar thing. So we're going to be here for two bars. We're going to strum the chord, then we're going to arpeggiate it, and we're going to play the A string, and then we're going to play the strings descending from the B string. Then for the second bar, we're just going to strum it once before we go back into the either verse or chorus, which is that G and C chord section. Okay, so now I'm going to play through that whole pre-chorus section um, just so that you can hear an example of what it sounds like. So here we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> Okay, so we've been through the, the verse and the chorus part of this song, so they're the same. And then we've got the pre-chorus that we've been through. Um, if you're unsure of any of it, just go back and watch some things over. Um, and if there are some things about John Mayer's playing that you're unsure of or want to check out, we've got a course and that'll be in the link in the description. Um, otherwise, I'll see you in the solo video. Thanks very much. Massive thank you from me and the rest of our wonderful tutors for watching this video. If you do want to check out another video, another playlist, you can click right over here. Otherwise, if it feels like the right time for you and you're ready to give it a go, our Guitar Club link is right up here. You can get a 14-day free trial and you'll get access to our complete courses, our amazing community, and everything you need to properly upgrade and start loving the process of learning the guitar. I'll see you later.